Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Getting up for a little bit of a later morning this morning. Unfortunately, had some plums and you know what? Had to deal with some business anyways. Wishing you the best of the best Thursdays possible out there in cryptocurrency land. It's almost Friday. That doesn't mean anything because cryptocurrency is not sleep. But you know what? As always, wishing you the best of the best. Whatever you want in your life, I want that for you right here, right now. Let's get in a live scene. As long as it's a good thing, actually. <laughs> you know, you never know. You never know. But I'm sure that if you're tuning into content like this, you're probably good natured. Anyways, uh, daily right over here, as always, starting with the higher time frames and below all major moving averages. As as long as we are resisting, uh, especially the 10 simple moon average, the, the lowest period on this uh, chart, I am going to be bearish. We are essentially in a bear market with lower highs and lower lows over the last over a year. And uh, now set up like this. Well, it's, you know, it's it's one of those things. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And uh, just another example of Darth Maul defending this area once again. So let's actually go down to the lower time frames. I believe I left you off last night, somewhere around here when we just put in this nice bearish engulfing dildo. And essentially what I have and what we're looking at and how I'd like to follow this up is we have a nice support trend line right over here right here at about that 3510-ish area. As long as we are above there, I don't, while I do believe that this likely breaks down, you know, it could just be another hunt, just like you got right over here, just like you got it right over here, just like you got right over here. Overall, these things are designed to essentially generate liquidity for the bigger accounts because, well, you can't just market buy or market sell 100 million contracts of Bitcoin and expect like nothing to really happen. Uh, it's gonna spook the market too much. So that's why you get this sort of floaty, flighty price action that uh, that is indicative of hunts and uh, essentially Instagram institutional order flow dynamics at play. By the same token of the upside, uh, you know, bulls need to break this area right over here, the area of rejection last night. Of course, I, I'm leaning down here, you know, of course, it's on the side of the overall trend with, especially with a rejection like this last night on decent volume, volume and then more importantly, followed through um, as your lower level uh, exponentials and simples start to cross over and once again, uh, signal that pressure on mentality. Well, yes, I do believe that this is likely to break to the downside, but just like I just want to reiterate that this 3510 ish area right over here, absolutely critical until it's fully broken on at least a two hour dildo, preferably higher um, then it could just be another hunt, just like this very brutal one right over here. Uh, so again, for now, this range, this block that we've been stuck in is just a block of liquidity is what it really is. You know, wipe out the wipe out the uh, the long stops down around here and then wipe out the short stops right around here. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This is well, this is fucking crypto baby anyways uh anyways let's actually just reiterate what's going on in the in the bigger picture well this guy right over here still very much active this symmetrical triangle that bitcoin put in over the course of about two and a half weeks uh at the end of december and beginning in early january that is actually still active uh as far as the measure move goes because we are still respecting the breakdown trend line of it and just creating lower highs and lower lows um after breaking down from there so yes as long as we are essentially below 3850 this is my main look this is what i'm essentially looking for you know i know a lot of analysts will like describe a billion different fucking situations that's you know that's great but you, you, it's there's also like okay well what's the point if you're not going to give your opinion on it as well and this this would be my opinion as long as we are below this area right over here uh other exchanges look a little bit more um or sorry other bitcoin products that are you know like like the futures and gbdc look a little bit more um they actually reveal a little bit more about price action we'll go to them in just a second but for now uh yes i am leaning towards this half happening down around here to your prior load around 3250 ish area that will also be and whoa hey what's up man how you doing cosmic wave hey nice name sounds uh, sounds very trance like anyways uh good to meet you man and uh this area down around here 3250 also a an area of great interest because that will be where the 200 simple moving average uh on our weekly doodle chart comes in right over here whoops let's go right over there put in the 200 simple represented by the red uh moving average right over here uh that is what currently held up the uh, the 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 current low of bitcoin and if Bitcoin were to get back down around there, I would not want to be bearish coming down there. Now, of course, could Bitcoin break it on the next pass? Yeah, possible. I think that is unlikely, though. And I'll, and I'll be providing a lot of reasons why I don't believe that we're going to get like a major trending move like today, you know, anytime soon, really, or, or breakage of that area. Although I do believe that it breaks over time. So it's one of those delicate conversations, as always. And this is why... And, 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 you know, I, I think the person, uh, the, the, the kind of person who tunes into content like this um, and, the, and the content like FUD TV last night where, where I had an interview on, they can understand non-black and white thinking and, and thinking in the gray zone. So that's, you know, that's, but so, so that's kind of person that I want to be speaking to, but understand that, you know, yes, I am bearish overall. I do not believe that we've seen the lows, but does that mean that we're just going to shoot on to new lows from here? I 
would say it's it's less likely. I think that Bitcoin's going to spend a lot of time just essentially bouncing around in this area as long as we are above the 200 simple, this red line, and below this 200 exponential moving average right over here. There's been no real change from this phase. This is a consolidation. You see it marked in the in the volume characteristics of this very corrective volume, but uh, but but nonetheless, you know, if you are looking for that big move, be careful. Understand that more often than not, big moves you know don't happen. And I see a lot of traders chopping themselves up, especially after a lot of people had made some damn good uh, trades uh, shorting this area right over here um, which uh, which I which I'm actually still holding my short from there and I did short it uh, did, did did do a little bit more this morning actually um, you know a lot of the time people will try to over trade when you get into consolidation area just giving it back when you don't have to understand that these moves these major breakouts or breakdowns they happen like a few times a year so other than that it's mainly just trading ranges and right now the range again is this low 200 simple and this high 200 exponential as long as we're in there nothing really major has changed so that is you know i always want to be very 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 adamant in relating that so going back now over here and going back into our lower time frames on the on our fresh GDAX chart. You can see that, you know, overall, this is not this is not the most healthy looking chart, uh, even in the lower time frames. But more importantly, this is very corrective price action. To me, this, uh, you know, you could just look at this right here and you could say, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> this is exactly what you look for on, you know, on a major on a major move. We had a 50 percent move down from 6000 consolidation of likely a bearish consolidation to be resolved to the downside. Again, as denoted by this volume signature, as denoted by the price action, again, lower highs and, you know, uh, and basically creating creating what 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 is shape what is likely to shape out to be well one of these you know if we just extend this further down what's been governing our our lower highs in this segment uh also going to be lining up with the 200 exponential I'll, I'll keep that on one keep that one in mind as well and if we do bounce off this area once again well then we'll have two uh sorry three touches on the on the downside so three touches makes a trend and what are we likely to create as we spend our time bouncing around in this area well Beautiful descending triangle, just like you had at the at the six thousand level, right over here. And my God, what's up, man? Uh, good to have you in here, Con uh, Con Choi. Good to meet you, man. Hopefully, I'm saying your name properly. And uh, I, I I just want to say welcome to all the new people from FUD TV. Really enjoyed my time with Elliot. Um, super cool guy. And you know, and I really enjoy the people who are coming over from FUD TV because they seem to be the same type of person uh, that's already in this in this community. Essentially, the type of person who is is understanding Understanding that that things are neither moon nor doom most of the time it's more gray area thinking and that's what's gonna you know that's I mean if someone's been telling you that that this shit's going to the moon for like the last year year and a half or, or going you know down to 1000 for the last year year and a half I mean well obviously the person who's bearish could be a little bit more right or they're gonna appear to be more right right now but you know, it's 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 the same it's the same very simple minded type thinking. Uh, this is you know this is <laughs> we are in the middle of a very intense uh, phase of the market cycle, and I'd be imagining that. Uh, <laughs> If you're if you're going to be uh, on one end of the extreme, what, no matter which end it is, you're likely to be in the long run wrong. Anyways, um, okay, so so working off this guy right over here, do have we kind of covered the four hour dildo time frame again? It's just basically working off this block, thirty five ten to the downside, thirty five eighty to the upside. If thirty five eighty does get broken to the upside, which again I'm not leaning towards this happening, I don't believe that this happens. This is certainly more pressure onto the downside right here. Then Bitcoin could very easily have another an, uh, another easy run into this uh, thirty. 700 ish area this kind of block right over here um but uh but but what i think is more likely to happen is that you probably break this area right over here over some amount of time however long it takes whatever you know whatever it ends up being uh and then there will be support on the downside but again this symmetrical triangle right over here i do believe that, that is likely to get hit um you know sooner rather than later uh, as far as the 3250 target down around here as long as as long as key point as long as bitcoin is below 3850 right over here now if bitcoin does get back above 3850 that goes out the window and still dealing with this uh, descending trend line right over here governing our lower highs does that mean that bitcoin can't break above that and still you know and still be bearish absolutely absolutely it can if it did make a lower high if it did if it did make a higher high on a daily that would be interesting it'd be one of the first it'd be one of the few times it's done in the last over a year or, or first time as we've sent, essentially just had a down downwards trend um but it's still it's still not it in fact i do want to denote something that i am mulling over right now and uh, and talk about this over in 2014 2015 mark cycle right over here Again, when comparing market cycles, understand that, you know, different assets, whether it's magic, internet money, forex, commodities, 
uh, insert random fucking asset here. Uh, they have very similar market cycles, right? Very, 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 very similar market cycles because, well, we're dealing with human emotions, human psychology. And when you look at this area, and, and, sorry, and, and so and so you see these, you see general trends repeated over time. Essentially, is, is what I'm getting to. You see these trends that have the same sort of principles as far as mark cycles go, and then the the asset itself, the specific asset, will have like its own personality and how it plays that, you know, that that parabolic move and then doom out essentially. So we have a great example over here in 2014, 2015, uh, where Bitcoin, you know, basically did the same thing, had a parabolic blow off top, and then went through a nice downwards capitulation phase into accumulation. And then began it, then birthed a new uh, new mark cycle, which absolutely beautiful. It's so it's so nice to see. Anyways, uh, you know, to me, this area right over here is very similar to this area right over here in the way that Bitcoin kind of dropped off and lost about fifty percent of its fifty uh, percent of its price from that fr uh, fr um, from this descending triangle consolidation right over here down to this. Uh, low with that guy right over there and we have about the same thing right over here right we have another you know we have another descending triangle leading into this down over here about 52 percent then we bounced up what was it about you know if we go dildo body dildo body about 23 24 25 percent and what do we have right over here Tw you know about 25 percent something like that again very 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 similar also look at the volume characteristics of this this guy right over here in relation to this guy right over here that is very similar to this guy over here in relation to this guy right over here just as an aside if bitcoin is going to get the more violent form of capitulation which doesn't need to happen you can get capitulation can, can come multiple ways but people are most familiar with the with the very violent way it's about causing the right emotion though it's about forcing the right it's it's basically about forcing capitulation in, in, by, by essentially causing the emotion of helplessness despair and you know just lack of just lack of of of, of any of, of of any hope um but if Bitcoin is going to get the more violent wave capitulation, I want to see volume uh, comparable to what it did in, in its parabolic cycle right over here, just like you did right here and right here. So I'd want to see something similar to this guy right over here. Anyways, um, not only is that all, you know, <laughs> well and good and kind of lining up, but we do have an external factor like the MVT signal kind of agreeing with this as well. In fact, let's just bring it up. And the MVT signal, again, is not related to price, volume, and time. And it is essentially the network value divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolated using a forward backwards 90-day uh, moving average, I believe it is. So again, you can't use this on a weekly. You have to use it, this on a daily for all the people who are saying, oh my God, we're flashing green right now. But basically this thing is, you know, this thing calls major tops and major bottoms uh, when it flashes a red, when it flashes a green. And yes, this has been updated for the new uh, upgrades to the Bitcoin chain with Lightning and Liquid uh, as verified by Willy Woo himself. Anyways, um, so when it comes down to it, looking at this guy, uh, we have we. Let's, I just want to see what the reading was in 2014. Remember, can, keeping in mind that this is a completely external thing, and just to line it up, this is you know this is the area that we are looking at, and this is the area that we're looking at down around here. And if we were to just put a nice horizontal right over there and scroll, oh, you bastard, and scroll into the more immediate time frames, well, where, where, would, be, where would we be doing in 2018? As you can see, bringing this guy right up right around here, right in the same, basically right in the smack dab in the middle of the same area. So that is quite interesting to me. Anyways, the reason why I bring this up and the reason why I just got sidetracked by my own, by, uh, by my own thoughts is because I was trying to make the point that even if Bitcoin were to break out, technically speaking, and put in, you know, uh, even a higher high, it actually did do that same thing in 2014, right over here, where you know you did put in that area and then you rallied, you rallied once and then put in a, a little bit of a higher high right over here. Very interesting, very interesting indeed. Um, obviously, we have not done that in 2018, but I do just, or sorry, 2019. My God. Um, you know, we, we just put in a lower high so far right over here. But if it were to happen, I want to be saying that that is not the most important thing to me. What, what what would hold a shit ton more weight is the weekly right over here. If the week, as long as the weekly is opening and closing dildos below this purple 200 exponential moving average right over here, I don't see any reason to be uh, to be considering this a potential bottom. You know, not only is the volume characteristics wrong, the you know the percentage bounce, you know, the time spent at the lows, MBT signal volatility, and this is all you know gone over in detail in my in my long term analysis playlist um, on my YouTube. So definitely check that out if you want like the full on look on that. Uh, but you know. <laughs> The things that would the, the things that I'd have to see in order to make me reconsider all of that, given given what I just said, 
is I'd have to see a weekly dollar both open and close above this purple 200 exponential moving average until that happens. You know, yeah, maybe we do get another. I mean, even if again, I'm not leaning towards this happening, but if it were to happen, I just wanted to note that it's not necessarily all said and done off the daily. That's why it's not as important Then the third and final and most important thing. You know, if I were to like jump straight in to be bullish is uh, I need to see us get back above 6000. Of course, you're probably going to know beforehand, uh, but I'm getting so fucking sidetracked right now. I do apologize. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> too much coffee today. Anyways, um, so I want to go back on over here to the daily and I, I should have really started off with this. So again, I do apologize about this, but uh, daily right over here is, is, is interesting to me because we are seeing a strengthening trend on the ADX DMI. You see the ADX started to starting to uh, form a new trend. DMI minus is technically dominant right now, but it's not above the signal uh, line or anything like that. So it's, you know, if this were to actually start going, this would be quite a powerful, uh, uh, quite a powerful move, most likely. Now, here's the thing. Also, the RSI trending below the exponential over here and and within the bearish control zone. In fact, you'll notice if you were watching this yesterday or I sorry, sorry, this was two days ago on the 22nd when Bitcoin had this run up over here testing the, uh, the 3600 number. It actually tested the outside or sorry, the the upper end of the bearish control zone and was rejected from it. So to me, that is telling me, OK, we are cool with living in the bearish control zone this is a bearish consolidation as verified by this this marking right over here just being just operating between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone um and then now you know getting rejected from getting out of it in fact you could even say that it's just slowly getting ground down over here and that is one way that you could certainly use the rsi it's like a line chart in a way but tells you a little bit more or a little bit unique information so to speak and um and looking at this guy, yeah, uh, it do, you know, it, you do see that in the price action as, as it is shuffled below all major moving averages. Jewel right over here is interesting as well. Jewel actually is giving, I would consider this a sell signal. And in fact, by the way, if you have the Jewel, if you have access to the Jewel, um, I did make a new update to it. So make sure that you refresh and you're using version three, I believe it is. Uh, you'll have you'll have a you'll have this other line over here. It's going to be yellow on default. I changed mine to white and I'm going to be uploading a video probably later tonight on how to use this. Although you can see that this is <laughs> this is actually <laughs> it's going to be a great example because you're going to get a full you're basically going to get an insight to see how it operates pretty much firsthand. Um, uh, now, of course, is this a sell signal? It actually is, according to the jewel. I don't like taking sell signals like this, like this deep in in the red territory. It's just, you know, how much how much meat is left on the bones over here. But that's also why I say, while I do believe Bitcoin likely breaks down, you know, probably somewhere to its prior low, somewhere around that range, you know, 3250, 3300, you know, maybe even 3150, something like that. I don't believe that it's going to be breaking down to new lows from there. I, I don't think that it's just it's about to fall off a cliff. This to me, again, very corrective. You even have the characteristics of distribution right over here. I mean, if uh, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't say this, but it actually kind of does look like an inverted cup and handle the way that it's situated. This would, you know, this obviously it does throw it off but my but the point is regardless of what name you call it which i don't care especially in cryptocurrency i don't care what name you you have for a pattern it's the uh, it's the feeling of it and the and what it's telling you about price action and this is distribution um in the overall sense of it you see this very low volume kind of hang it well while these highs are being put in and then the selling you know continues once again as we put in you know just make a series of lower highs on the downside uh this is you know this is your classic bear market bullshit bear market bullshit no it's it's beautiful actually because you get the you know price action gets walked up and you typically create like these rising channels and then get you know just get walked down in your consolidations not always but bitcoin does have a history of doing that uh two day right over here two days quite interesting as well the two day stokes are still crossed down the last time that uh or sorry the the, the two day stokes were rejected from getting to the bullish control zone this was obviously you know well over here but not only was the rejection of the 21 exponential which is very important to me because that means that the two day dildo death cross right over here the green feet five and the two and the purple 200 is still you know is still still holds weight and we're still respecting it as long as we're respecting that and below all major moving averages uh, especially the 21 you know i'm going to be leaning to the bear side stochastics agreeing with that so i like that as a trending oscillator uh essentially confirming that fact and also two-day rsi trending below the exponential as well deep in the bearish control zone not even able to really get out of the bearish control zone over there so to me this is you know likely to carry on more jewel as well not giving you this actually not giving you as powerful as a signal as a daily this one would be a lot more um, a, a lot more variable of a signal. In fact, you know, yeah, technically it did cross over right over here, but very fucking deep in this in this territory. It's I don't like taking signals in this area. And this is why I feel like this move, you know, if it does get back down to the prior low, it's probably going to bounce from there. It's probably going to bounce. And that's the whole thing with these ascending triangles. Or, or what or what I believe is is kind of, you know, morphing to be a descending triangle. And essentially that 
and essentially that they are great for generating liquidity for the bigger accounts because everyone gets super bullish, you know, on the highs right over here. I mean, people just get bullish off of every $100 moves and then people get super bearish when it's down around here, you know, posting charts of like 20, you know, 2000, 1000, you know, 800, whatever it might be. So when you get everyone on the wrong side of the wrong try, oh, sorry, when you, when you get everyone on the wrong side of the, of the trade at the wrong time, well, then it's just great for getting your own bags filled. If you're a bigger account trying to, you know, get fills on hundreds of millions of dollars worth of, uh, of bitcoins, uh, whether it be to the long side or the short side. So again, you know, I just want to exercise caution. I am bearish, but do I believe that it's time to be, you know, having the big directional trade on probably not. And I'd be happy to be wrong on this. I'd be happy to be wrong on this, but the, where I know I'm going to be wrong is is if Bitcoin actually closes a full on daily below 3250, if it can do that, then yes, it's time to reconsider and probably, you know, probably making our way deep into the 2000, or, you know, in, into the mid 2000s after that. Um, so again, you know, I'll always, you know, I, as a trader, I always have to know where my technical analysis is telling me that something new is going on. That would be the signal for that. Uh, and again, to the upside would be because <laughs> I got so fucking sidetracked explaining that again. I apologize about that. To the upside, it would be again a weekly deal to both opening and closing above the 200 exponential moving average. That would be uh, that would be a, a huge deal to me. Anyways, um, for now, as you can see, lower time frames right over here. Four hour Stokes, uh, fresh cross down last night on that Darth Maul dildo rejection, and you know just still headed down plenty of room to go three hour right over here still headed south getting into the bearish control zone just uh, just just now uh six hour i believe we have not crossed we are losing momentum as we get our way to the bullish control zone so that is typically a sign now obviously it's still crossed up no doubt about that but it is losing momentum if bitcoin does end here or lower by uh by the end of the six hour dildo close well you're probably gonna you're probably gonna either hint at a cross or just lose even more momentum especially you know when it especially happens right at the right at the edge of the bearish or sorry bullish control zone you know i, I consider that a potential rejection uh but that's going to take some time to tell now let's go back on to the higher time frames i believe we left off on the two day you know two day adi dmx again you know dmi minus technically the do the dominant trend but we're not getting any sort of a strong trend either which way i don't consider that anything right there and jewel kind of a sell but i again i don't believe that there's that much meat on the bones left on this one what's more important to me is a three-day uh stokes over here three-day little stokes is very important because every time that this one crosses over especially with my settings uh it gives it gives a pretty damn good trending signal actually in fact the last time that you crossed down to the downside right over here well this was early november you know the break of six thousand you probably remember that this guy over here was a major dump you know th this this was basically the low so far uh, at around 32 3300 ish area and as you can see, once again, we've crossed to the downside and it's been confirmed and we are gaining momentum. And also it is telling you this is a rejection. I read this as a rejection of getting out of the neutral zone right over here. So Bitcoin essentially just oscillating between the bearish control zone and then the edge of the, the edge of the neutral zone and giving you a cross as well. So to me, that is also indicative that, you know, pressure is on. Nothing's really changed here. Three day dildo death cross right over here below all major movement averages. You know, it doesn't look too damn healthy as long as we're essentially, you know, from, from the two day and three days, as long as we're below this swing low right over here at around 3690, 3700 ish area, quite bearish. Um, doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. And, uh, yeah, man, <laughs> it took me a long time to explain this. Sorry about that. Should have uh, should have began with this, but you know what? Sometimes you drink a little bit too much coffee and you just get carried away with your own self. So I want you guys to be the one to tell me, you know, when I'm uh, what uh, when I'm not clear, when I'm fucking up, all that good stuff. Hopefully this does come through um, loud and clear though. But uh, but hey, I do understand that sometimes I can get a little bit wrapped up in my own uh, in my own thoughts. Uh, weekly over here, weekly is very important as well because the weekly, I read this as another rejection of the ten simple moving average right over here, the red the red moving average followed up and more importantly a follow-up of this bearish engulfing dildo right over here so last week we pet we we put in this one which was another uh, another rejection of the red 10 simple people are calling this a reversal dildo but again when you're talking about reversals this is the difference between an analyst who just reads investopedia for a few days and someone who actually trades and does this as a living and and essentially you know when you have an actual reversal dildo off of a major trend you want to see extremely heavy volume on it and more importantly follow through on top of that without those two things you ain't you ain't shit do we have either of those two things on this guy no in fact we don't you can see that the volume moving average right over here is significant you know it's significantly lower than that um and to me it's a rejection of that and more importantly after a bearish engulfing total like this and this is the very 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 important thing to be aware of 
because people lose sight of the fucking trees in the forest or whatever the saying. No one even knows what that saying is, but uh, but but we actually have continue on this continuation on this week's dildo right over here. Now, what? Uh, how do you get to continuation? Well, just taking out the lows of both of these essentially. So the bearish engulfing dildo has been followed up, and I'd imagine that is you know probably likely to get even more follow through um, as time ticks onwards and downwards, and especially as long as we're respecting this ten simple moon average right over here as resistance. That is my disposition with this price action. So. Again, keep that in mind. People get, people will 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 focus on one thing and lose sight of the whole picture, and uh, and present a case that is just you know quite literally just not true. Um, so again, e you know, even with the events of that rally up to 3,600, that to me is just a rejection of this area so far, as long as we're below it. And again, for, you know, that trend, that, that bearish engulfing dildo is more likely statistically speaking to be get followed through. We have made news lows on top of that. Uh, I'd imagine the next few days before the end of the week, we should get some more price action. Uh, if this is going to, if this is really going to play out, um, so yeah, uh, what else do we have to talk about? Okay, let's go over here to CME. CME is very important because CMEs, I think, have just have a better and easier chart to read. In fact, look at the week, looking at the weekly on the CMEs. I mean, you can, <laughs> you don't need, you know, you don't need to be a professional to to look at this and say, wow, that looks bearish. That looks a little bit bearish to me. Again, uh, re, uh, bearish engulfing diddle right over here on on uh, decent volume rejection of ten simple and continuation on this one, and then same thing right over here so far. Again, as long as we're living below that, doesn't mean Bitcoin can't get back above it. It's just to me, it's less likely than the former trend to just you know remain. Again, as a trader, I'm going with statistics, and until told otherwise, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it until until it doesn't work essentially. And that's one of the things that my mentor used to say is he would say it works until it doesn't and Probably, you know, people probably don't like that statement, but it's fucking true, man. And that's why trading and doing analysis is is, is a really gray area type thinking rather than black or white. Um, but yeah, let's go into lower time frames. That's where the action is happening on this guy. And we do have an actual formation in here. We do have a nice descending triangle. It does work as a descending triangle. We have made a couple uh, tries at the upper at the upside of this. Rejected on the 200 exponential on the last uh, on this last drive. Also a gap fill right over here, and then sell down. That was the impetus for me taking a position at 35.90. I closed that as you can see, and then I opened a new one uh, uh, significantly lower, although I closed most of my prior position at around $35. So opening it right around here, you know, as I woke up for the new day on, on my stream account, nonetheless, uh, you know, it's it, it's again a risk reward position. I'll be taking this off if we go back about $60. So 35.60 and I get the fuck out. Again, just, just playing the risk reward right over here. It doesn't mean it's gonna always work out. But as you can see, uh, it's nice support right around 3,500 even for CMEs as long as Bitcoin is closing above it you know don't want to get too damn bearish although if it if it does close below if it actually does break this area we do have a nice measured move pointing all the way down here to about 33 uh 3300 3350 which is also the 786 Fibonacci retracement and you can see that we're currently holding on to the 618 just a very common bought algorithmic target as uh, they're just gonna you know just common inputs for these sorts of things so again uh apex on this guy is coming in around yeah, coming in around literally the last day of January. Does that mean that we have to wait until the last day of January to resolve this? Absolutely not. In fact, it's extremely likely to be resolved actually at any moment now just because you are about 69% full, which is not only a great number, but typically when these sorts of things do start to burst. So uh, so again, it just becomes more and more and more and more and more likely as time progresses. Uh, now, of course, you know, will it, will it get forced all the way to the, all the way to the apex? I mean, very rarely do you see things, you know, exist all the way there, but yeah, it can happen. Um, I'd say though, but at, at any time it's, it is, you know, it is likely to do this. Uh, hourly stokes are, what are they doing right now? They are losing momentum to be fair. They are losing momentum to the downside. So no doubt about that. Uh, you know, you look at that and that would be a little bit in the, in the opposite direction. One hour hourly jewel over here is it, it, this, the hourly jewel, th this is a very delicate way to read it, but it's right in the middle here. And the way that the slow and the white are, are interpret, uh, are, 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 are interpolated alongside this red signal over here, if, if it actually signals that Bitcoin's probably going to pop back up and then likely get rejected, and that's probably going to be the next big sell. So 
you know, for my short position, I probably will get will get forced out of it. And then I'll just reposition higher if we tag this area once again at around 35, 60 ish area on CMEs. That would likely be what I'm looking for. Uh, again, as long as we're expecting that as resistance, I want to be taking shorts off that area. And uh, yeah, again, we said 3,500 breakdown point. Yep, got that, got that. Let's go check out GBDC. GBDC as well, kind of like walking the plank over here. Uh, four hour, oh my God, did the four hour close below this area? Yes, it did. The four hour did close below $4.00. And uh, 24 cents. So that was my big area. Um, now it, it is different on an hourly, but uh, I do put more weight on on the higher time frames. Is this hourly though the right way to be looking at it? Because it actually does kind of make sense like this. Although I'm not seeing the I'm not seeing volume confirmation on this. And hey, what's up, uh, Kendra? Good to meet you, Kendra. Um, but I'm not seeing volume confirmation on this being broken. Now, this is a rising channel, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern, typically, you know, typically going to break to the downside. Doesn't mean that it always does, but but statistically a shit ton more likely. And uh, and we're, but we're not getting the volume confirmation of this being a broke uh, being broken to the downside. Doesn't mean that it can't pour in, you know, as uh, as the market opens today. But I'd imagine that if this is going to be confirmed, we're going to see a massive gap down, probably back to this prior low right over here, and uh, and then and then kind of start filling in the space. That would likely also be an impetus, an impetus for Bitcoin, you know, likely coming back to its prior lows as well. Um, so four hour does look broken, but hourly, which also does, which also works as well, is not broken, which is very very rare that you see it that way actually in fact it's typically the opposite way um but uh but i'm actually more inclined here and this is one of the few times that i'll uh, this is one of the few times uh but i'm actually inclined here to say that it that the hourly is the one to go with just because we're not getting the volume reaction that i'd want to see off of a pattern like this to really confirm it now again like is is this is this volume over here you know <laughs> any different than spot no it's very corrective it's very corrective in a in a corrective bear i mean a rising channel bear flag is a bearish correct is a bearish corrective pattern right so Looking at that guy, um, yeah, I do believe that it's likely to break, but I want to see, I, I do want to see that volume confirm this area. Bringing up our oscillators right over here, four hour Stokes, fresh cross down, getting rejected from getting out of the bearish control zone, bad. Uh, we have four hour ADI DMX, we have DMI, uh, DMI minus dominant trend confirmed. We have ADX starting to begin a trend, okay. That would also certainly be on the side of the bears. Uh, what else do we have? We have uh, our four hour RSI trending below the exponential and into the bearish control zone bad we have four hour jewel are we getting a signal right over here yeah so the four hour jewel is is going to be the deciding factor in this guy because you can see that everything is bunched up right now and actually the way that it's situated it's going to be trying to fight this as support which is exactly what it should be doing because i believe that we are kind of resting on support according to the hourly the four hour i think is the wrong way to be looking at this but but looking at this guy right over here if it is if the if the faster light blue is able to break through this guy it that's going to likely be the that that's going to likely be the nice uh the the nice indication that i'm looking for to actually crack down to the prior low and hey what's up uh michael michael wilson good to meet you man good to have you in here um but everything else you know is signaling that this is likely to get broken to the downside you got this red flash in the background right over here and the white has crossed the the pink it's just we're waiting for the the cyan to cross the pink as well and that's going to be it um so yes price action is saying you know this is is broken volume is not confirming that's typically a red flag but this is a bearish pattern in an overall bearish market and this thing has been leading spot prices for the last over a year so i'm gonna go with it until until it tells me otherwise essentially there is a measure move to be made off this bear flag right over here it does point down to this actually it, it, it beautifully points down to this next support around two dollars and 54 cents two dollars 55 cents which would likely send bitcoin into the mid twos i'd imagine um as far as uh, as far as spot prices go so i do like that for good confluence and overall uh are we seeing the beginning etchings of this as a breakdown perhaps in in fact i it's it it does it does look like it wants to break down this is very weak action right over here especially when cmes are also in their own uh in their own um descending triangle which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern and when spot charts don't look too damn healthy themselves kind of walking the plank alongside this this area right over here but still not fully confirmed it's it's getting close it's getting damn close um so again uh let's actually throw a fib on this guy if you liked it you should have thrown a fib on it and let's put him on right over here come on baby there we go 
Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's do this uh, body to body. Uh, do you prefer body to body? It just feels good. Feels good, man. And you can see right over here. Yep, we're waste, we're we're resting on the six one eight, just like just like the CMEs were. And if the CMEs, uh, you know, price target is going to be right. Remember the the CMEs, the 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 descending triangle right over here does basically point it down on the measure move to about the seven eight six. Well, let's see what that would match up with on spot. And seven eight six down around here at around thirty three fifty. And that does make sense. That does that does actually have some good confluence with this horizontal trend line coming in right around here. And and, you know, of course, it is interesting to me as well that the 886 down around here, which Bitcoin really seems to like the 886 actually, uh, is lining up perfectly with this measure move off of this guy. So again, you know, one thing before the next, you know, there's probably gonna be bounces on the way down. Things don't just move in a straight fucking line, right? But overall, um, that is, you know, that is essentially what I'm thinking. And again, just to reiterate, don't want to get too damn bearish till this level is broken on a higher level dildo time frame. But if it does, it, I, again, while I don't think that that happens like today, tomorrow, or even next week, um, it is, you know, that, that, uh, that would be my signal for, okay, get ready for the 2000s most likely. Uh, let's go over and check out, or actually let's, let's talk about this as a descending triangle first. So yes, I am bearish and I do believe that that new lows are likely to be hit, but until this 3250 area is broken, well, you know, want to be careful with, with, uh, with having positions angled in that way, but let's just, let's just make the assumption that this is a descending triangle and that it does break downwards, which again, I am leaning towards that happening. Do we have this measure move, uh, uh, or sorry, where's this measure move pointing down towards around 24, sorry, 2350 ish area. Uh, interesting. Okay. So that, so, so just keep that in mind, 2350 ish area. Now on the bitstamp chart, I actually have gone out and mapped out, uh, three areas where I believe, uh, potential or, or sig <laughs> extremely, extremely, extremely high chance for significant bounce plus potential for reversal. And again, when it comes to reversals off of a major macro trend, that is something that we quite literally just have to wait and see. We have to see the reaction, just like the reaction off this current low to me is very weak, is very anemic, is very corrective in nature. I need to see the reaction before I, before I judge, you know, whether I believe it's the ultimate low or not, um, which is where I think most analysts get it wrong. They like to call the low before it happens. Whereas I, I don't believe that, you, that, 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 that can be done. That's an analyst, not a trader. Trader has to wait and see proof. Um, until then the former trend more likely to continue. Anyways, this next area that I have in mind is right over here. The blue box territory between, uh, oh, 2300 and 2600. Where was the measure move on that descending triangle? 2350. But what else do we have coming in around here? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, you can see that the 886 Fibonacci retracement going from the ultimate high to the ultimate low of the last market cycle uh, is coming in right around that 2300 number. That is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, right over here, the 886. So Bitcoin does love that 886. Uh, we do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area as well. So I do like that. And if you throw on the volume profile, we do have some nice thick AF nodes coming around this area, even bigger than what you did at the 6,000 area, which, well, I'm sure a lot of people remember that one. And, uh, and it's coming right in the middle of this, uh, right in the middle of this blue box territory as well. If we go over here to the BLX index, we actually actually notice that the 377 blue exponential moving average on the weekly is coming in right around where? Right around 2600 as well. Very important. Why? Because 377 is something that is just ancient technology from the traditional markets, which does hold a shit ton of weight within those. Now, if I put this on a monthly, because I do want to, I do want to now talk about the monthly, um, there is some interesting over here as well. The monthly 89, the cyan uh, moving average right over here is coming in right around where? Right around 2450. But why is this important? Well, as we become closer and closer to the end of the month, I, I start to pay attention to the monthly because we're going to be getting a new tick on this. And as you can see right now, we are operating for the first time in Bitcoin's history ever, although that's a little bit of a farce because it really hasn't been operating all that long, uh, below the green 55 exponential moving average right over here. So to me, that is likely that, you know, if this breaks, then, then where's the next stop? Well, likely right around here. That would be the next kind of algo target, essentially, uh, going off of common input. So, you know, uh, as far as this goes, this to me is looking more like continuation than anything, as long as Bitcoin is essentially below especially the 55 exponential, which is currently coming in around 3,700. But, uh, but, uh, but, but from a more traditional standpoint, as long as it's below the high of this dildo right over here, which was, which is what everyone was looking for to be a reversal point. Of course it is not. I mean, this, this was in no way, shape or form a hammer dildo of a reversal off of a major macro trend. Again, the difference between an analyst and a trader, you got it. You have to know, you have to fucking know if you're going to be trading these markets, you need to see proof, not promises first. And the volume on this very lackluster in comparison to what 
what I would need to see on a major market low. It's not even above the volume moving average. And in fact, if we looked at it versus dollars traded, not coins traded, because remember this volume is measured in coins traded, not dollars traded, it would be significantly less because you know when Bitcoin is is in the three thousands, it's going to be easier to throw up more coins for, uh, for for the same amount of exposure as what you'd have right over here when Bitcoin is literally well above ten thousand. So so this is even significantly lower. Is 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 my point. And, and this was unlikely to be a reversal point, especially as long as we are operating below the, the high of this guy. Again, you know, I need to see if, you know, if you're not gonna have major volume on the potential reversal dildo, I need to see at least follow through with, with decent volume as well. We got neither of those things. So again, uh, that's all those things kind of pointing around in that direction. Uh, again, that does not guarantee, that does not guarantee at all whatsoever that, that, uh, that the 2300 to 2600 is gonna be the absolute low for Bitcoin. In fact, I don't believe it's gonna be. I think that it probably goes a little bit lower than that just because this is a little bit more of an obvious area and when major market lows are, are put in it's typically you know it's, it's, it's just basically someone with extremely deep pockets who decides all right uh this area looks good enough to me and they want to buy up as much as possible and how do they do that well they do it you know basically in some in some area that just where, where you can get the maximum amount of uh, the, the maximum amount of panic from the retailers because they uh, they they believe that that area is essentially you know has no market acceptance where it, it almost works in the opposite way it's kind of funny in the, in the way that it goes um so people are trying to like map these things out like oh there's not that much support right over here so it definitely can't be 1850 that's probably wrong or and if you're, or if you're looking right over here and you're like you know what this is a nine this is 942 Fibonacci retracement and we have a massive volume node coming in right around here got to go right around there or or you have you, or you have the or you have the biggest volume node coming around uh, 500 it's like it definitely has to go there no i don't believe that uh, i don't believe that, that can be done um, Again, I need to see proof, not promises. I need to see a, a response from the market, not a not not crystal ball magic type thinking. So, you know, I can come up with areas beforehand, but again, need to see the actual reaction. So, this would be my first uh, my first choice for the next one. Of course, if that one fails, and yep, then I do look towards eighteen fifty ish area. If that one fails, and yep, then I join the super bears down around eleven hundred to thirteen hundred, which by the way does have some not have the nine four two Fibonacci retracement, and it is the prior high of your former market cycle. Which again, an unspoken rule that uh, things to you know the prior highs become become your new lows doesn't mean that it always has to retrace all that way. In fact, it does not. Uh, but if it were to get down around that area. If Bitcoin is from a technical analysis standpoint to remain quote unquote okay, <laughs> um, then it's not, you don't want to see that area break. Uh, and you just need to close above it. You know, you can get wicks below and all that good stuff. And wicks are great for, for, for fucking with the retailers. Uh, but that's also why you want to be looking at the closures because I want to see where the bots and the algorithms are shuffling that price action for the actual close. That is what their inputs essentially go off of. And that is the, you know, the best way that I've found to really do it. So, Okay, so we've talked way too much about Bitcoin. I do apologize about that. I do apologize about getting mixed up in my own words to begin this one. You know, just probably not having good, um, probably probably jumping around a little bit too much. Apologies about that. But let's go check out Mr. Buterol, another easier chart to read, I, I believe, uh, in comparison to Bitcoin, because you are making a very obvious ascending triangle right over here. Uh, we, we didn't even get a chance to make a stab at the, uh, at the high like the CME's uh, descending triangle did. Um, but uh, but but again, you know, same sort of an area actually. Uh, walking the plank along the six one eight. Do I still consider this a potential head and shoulders reversal pattern? I'd actually say, I'd, I'd say it's less likely than the more obvious thing of a descending triangle right over here. If this was going to operate as a head and shoulders reversal you i feel like it's kind of worn out its welcome as far as a timing aspect goes you really wanted to see it break right over here and instead you got a just extremely nasty hunt uh on this wick and then boom right up and bit and what i think is is we have something new going on by the same token though it does that matter do we have the same sort of uh same sort of physio not physiological but psychological signature of what's going on in the price action in distribution well Yes, we do have a bearish formation nonetheless in this ascending triangle right over here. Uh, exponentials and simples, you know, signaling some pretty intense uh, selling from the Barts right over here. We have the, from the bots, not the Barts. Uh, for, uh, we have a four, uh, four hour dildo death cross right over here. The last time that we even got the four hour dildo death cross, I mean, it was golden cross right over here. But before that, you know, the last time that it got death cross, which sent it all the way down here was literally, I mean, it was all the way up here at around almost 700. This was the last time 
not th this was this was your death cross and then it didn't even it didn't even get well it did get close to getting gold golden cross a couple times but did not confirm itself and that led you all the way down here basically taking you from 700 to about 120 so if you're just trading those crosses doing pretty damn well uh so historically speaking it does does have some pretty damn good follow through and the fact that we are respecting all major moving averages right now um as they get on top of price or yeah above price action that to me is saying that this pattern is maturing and it's get re getting ready for the move and that's what i do believe especially when you look at this as a descending triangle with an apex coming in around uh probably the same time as around bitcoin as i'd imagine yeah yeah literally the last day of january it doesn't mean that bitcoin has, has to uh has to stay in here for for that whole time in fact i'd say this can break at any moment when you get this full it can it, it just becomes extremely likely to break um and uh, the way that you know the the, the way that these time frames oscillators are situated, as we are on support walking that plank, you see the four hour Stokes are crossed down, and they have plenty of room to go, baby. They got plenty of room. ADX DMI, we have a strengthening trend. DMI minus is the dominant trend. Uh, uh, Jewel, Jewel is actually crossing the signal trend line right now, or sorry, the signal the signal right now, the 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 the, the lighter blue crossing. Um, it's not a full signal or anything like that. It's it's not it's not your picture perfect signal, but one, but once again, price or, or pressure is on. The last time that you got across was right over here, as you can see. The time before that was right over here. And the time before that was was a sell right over here. So Jewel on the four hour has gotten price action pretty damn well. So we are starting to have price action really being ground down and situated, getting ready for that next move is the way that I look at things. If we go to the higher time frames, uh, like a daily perhaps, yeah, let's see what the daily says. Yeah, below all major moving averages right now, you know, this doesn't look too damn healthy. What about the two day? Two day, same same shit. We were about to have the ten simple cross to the downside of the of the uh, yellow twenty one exponential. The last time that we had that was literally right over here at five hundred, and then it got it got crossed the upside right over here. But anytime you have a, a large counter trend move, it's typically going to be a fake out to the first upside one two uh, two day RSI deep in the bearish control zone. Uh, what about three day? Same same shit essentially same shit. Uh, three days Stokes uh, fresh cross to the downside rejecting this area. Again, uh, Mr. Buterol led this led this bitch to the upside. Now it's leading it once again to the downside. Nice Darth Maul dildo right over here rejecting the ten simple. So it, it almost wanted to cross the upside, but it but the bots and the algos said nope. We'll sell that bitch and uh, back down. Uh, DMI ADX on the three day. By the way, ADX is strengthening and DMI minus dominant trend, although not. You know, it's, it's actually just beginning, scarily enough. Uh, this guy could really do some damage if he does break down. Now, remember that that descending triangle on the lower time frames, uh, best seen on the four hour right over here, does have a measure move basically down to the 786, which is funny, right? We see the 786 really getting a lot of love. It's the measured move off of the CME's uh, descending triangle. It would match up with a nice support on spot for Bitcoin as well. And right over here on Mr. Buterol, we do see that same 786 as a target if this were to break, if this were to be confirmed breakdown. You know, what? I'm just going to lower this right over here because that actually is where this uh th this this support trend line does indeed lie so again uh while i do believe that this is highly likely to break down um you know could it break to the upside yeah it could but as long as you're below 123 nothing really to be looking at for the uh for the bulls um and even then you know you're gonna have a lot of uh, resistances to chew through on the way up this thing has not really done anything different from a higher time frame perspective until you can get back above uh this 144 and a half area right over here Alrighty, um, what else do we have to look at? Uh, I guess we'll quickly look at Mr. Ripples. Are we doing the same thing on Mr. Ripples nipples over here? Uh, again, distribution right on the top and kind of curling back down around, coiling up as, as uh, <laughs> I love how Peter Brand says that it's coiling up and then all of the XRP army people say, that must be good. Not necessarily. Uh, as long as it's below, as long as it's below 34 and a half cent, very bad in fact. Doesn't mean it can't get back above, but as you can see, reject, reject, reject. Trend strengthening according to the exponentials. Uh, three uh, three day fresh stoke cross down, rejecting even getting out of the bearish control zone, the deep bearish control zone. Nasty, very fucking nasty. Uh, don't really see too much holding up from about 28 cents, low 28 cents. Uh, and that's what I'd be doing. I'd be very bearish on this as long as you're below 34 and a half cents. Um, I would be looking for further downside. Uh, what else we got? Um, let's go check out Stellar really quick. Stellar, 10 cent. Wow, Stellar is really walking the plank. Stellar is, you know, keeps on testing this area down around here. In fact, you know, for, for whatever reason, like there's a lot of people really bullish on Stellar thinking that this is healthy price action. Stellar had one of the nasty, uh, okay, so first things first, Stellar has, it does have a chart that stands out because it doesn't pump all the way up and then literally dump all the way back down. That is impressive, especially in, it, considering the overall bullshit in this market that just literally pumps and then dumps. 
you see this you see this consolidation right over here you get a bull trap that is a huge a huge warning signal when you when you break it up to the upside and then come back down almost almost always that is a phenomenal sell happened to be it, it even gave you a second chance right over here when it broke the support of this and then it gave you a third chance on the retest of that broken support as resistance and now we are putting in the m of murder the m of murder right over here and same thing as mr ripples as long as you're below that kind of local low of this distribution like pattern uh, right around uh, a little under 11 cents pretty damn bearish but just like bitcoin when you're coming back down to your former lows over here you don't want to be too damn bearish either uh you do have support right around here have bounced off of it a couple of days ago and uh looks like we're getting down around there once again um stokes are crossed down but don't really I, I don't really see that i mean they can stay down there for a while but they also are, are kind of in the in the more critical zone uh adx is strengthening dmi minus dominant trend but not above the signal line to be fair uh uh daily rsi trending below the exponential in the bearish control zone bad as well three day i believe has a fresh death cross yeah three day green 55 and purple 200 right over there crossing the downside below all major moving averages it, it's never going to be a good thing as long as especially as long as you're below this blue 377 again showing its face once again be careful with this be be fucking careful i would have no reason to be bullish on this thing as long as you're below i mean really especially 14 cents but really like like 19 cents uh, uh i would not be surprised if, if this thing saw like six cents or even or even uh, four and a half cents if bitcoin were to break down into the 2000s um so yeah uh let's get back on over here to bitcoin and wrap this bitch up because it's already been too long and i and i'm already uploading this video a little bit too late so i do pause about that do pause do do a pause about the uh the uh the the delay and let's go to the four hour again not really i mean it's basically the same range that we were looking at yesterday uh with a hunt you know darth maul right over here likely to go test the supports we already kind of have tested the support but i'd imagine that it's likely that we give it another try another shot um in the more immediate time frames, uh, 35, 15, still the, still the area to break 35, 10, as long as we are closing hourly two hour dildos above there, don't want to get too damn bearish. If it does break, then yes, I do look at least to the seven, eight, six, remember in confluence with Ethereum's target and the CME's ascending triangle. Uh, and overall, I'm still looking for this, this symmetrical triangle right over here to get hit at some point down to 3250, but that can take some time. But, uh, you know, again, as long as we're below 3850, still very much in play. And, uh, what's up? I know nothing. I know nothing. It's like, it's beautiful, man. I know nothing. I'm a fucking moron. Hey, good to meet you, man. Um, pleasure to have you here. And uh, again, to the upside, while I don't think, while I think it's a lot less likely to happen uh, above 38, 30, sorry, 3580, not much stopping you from about uh, 36, uh, about 3700, also the 0 0.5 fib. Um, that's your next big resistance. If things were to get above there, again, I'm not leaning towards this happening. Then 3850, kind of the breakdown of this uh, symmetrical triangle right over here, the next area to be aware of. That would also likely line up with the descending trend line governing your lower highs. So again, um, that's kind of my thoughts right now. Uh, I am I am biased to the downside in the more immediate time frames, but overall, nothing's changed. We're just consolidating. I mean, we're just consolidating. We're, we're, we're having a pretty nasty bearish consolidation. It's taking its time. It's doing exactly what it's what it's meant to do and essentially piss people off, you know, run stops and then make make like a five a move in five minutes and then go, go into consolidation mode for another week or two. Anyways, that's going to do it for this morning. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Looking forward to see you guys there and uh, take care.